your video. This is my rock I have, and what I'm going to expect you to do, especially since I'm not going to teach you to save for a long time, I'm going to expect you to um, come in, grab your rock, go to your seat, model. Try using the tools we're talking about, the ones we're, we're using in class, and see how far you get to it. And when you're done, um, shut down your computer. You don't save. You put your rock back. You then come in another day. You're going to lose your work each time. And I'm good with that. You will be too eventually. Um, if you're at home, get your own rock. They're very easy to find. And try to model those. You can try and save them if you want. It likely won't work. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be covering different modeling tools each week. Um, when you saw that guy in the demo we saw, he's using maybe 50 or 60 different tools to model with. And there's hundreds of tools to model with. We don't, in, in two semesters of class, I couldn't show you every tool to model in this program. Um, as it stands, in five or six weeks, I've had to throw out whole technologies that I used to teach that I just stopped because we don't have time to fit them any, anymore because they keep adding them. And a modeler has this bag, like a tool bag with all these different tools in it. And what a modeler does generally is they take whatever they're supposed to model, it could be a Coke bottle or a grenade or whatever, and they throw a tool at it and they see what happens. And if that tool doesn't work, they try a different tool. If that tool doesn't work, they try a different tool. And the way they get as good as it as the guy we saw in the demo is they start to learn what tools they like, how they work, and they can get that fast at it. Now, when we cover them, we're going to cover them roughly historically chronologically, the way, the way they were invented over time. Um, last week, we looked at primitive modeling, which is where we take these objects that are made out of points, edges, and polygons, and we shove them in the interface, and we start to work with them. This week, we're going to look at point, edge, and polygon manipulations, which will get you much further. And then next week, we'll look at something that's historically later and historically later, and it will keep going like that. So this is how we normally start. We have our interface like this, um, one hand on the mouse, one hand on the keyboard. I'm going to go to all four screens because I want that. And I'm going to do what we did last week. I'm going to start with a primitive. Uh, before I start with that primitive, I'm going to look at my rock, and I'm going to decide what part of my rock is going to be the front, what's going to be the top, and what's going to be the right. Because I want to be able to hold that rock in front of my face, and I want to be able to match it up directly. Remember this, if you model here, here, and here, it will always be right here. But if you model here, it can be wildly wrong here. <laughs> so I do want you to have these in your hands. I want you to be able to look at them and look at the bottom of them and the side of them and see them so that you can compare them directly to these windows. Um, I'm going to put a primitive in, and I'm going to put a primitive in that looks roughly where I want it to go. Um, I'll go to Polygon Mesh, and I'll pick a, um, I will pick for this, I'm going to pick a cone just to try something different. It looks like that. I'm going to play with the property panel. I want it um, thicker. I know that. The height I sort of like, the thickness I sort of like, and with this thickness I can actually compare it in the window. I can see that's about right. I'm going to make it a little bit higher. And then I'm going to give it subdivisions to break up the way I think I want it to break up. Uh, we'll say that. Uh, do I want that? Oh, that's that even really where I want it. I want that like that, and I want that more like that. Probably, and maybe this more like that. Okay. Now, the sheet. This sheet, which we've enshrined in this Lucite case here forever. Uh, this sheet's really important. This sheet is something you should always have with you when you're modeling. You should have it at home, you should have it here. There's a link to it on my page is how important this sheet is. Uh, if we go back over here and we go to Google Sites, down here we have um, somewhere I have it, da, 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 the Softimage keyboard equivalents. This little sheet right here, this has all of the keyboard equivalents for the stuff you're doing. So remember last week we talked about the S key to move around and XCV. Um, if I look under um, viewing tools, the first one is S. And it says that right there. And likewise, if I look around, um, probably editing tools, I bet. Oh, transform tools. A little separate panel for it. 
right there, X, C, and V. Shows it right there, and even says what the mice do. So if you find yourself going to a menu often, go look at the sheet. The sheet probably has the keyboard equivalents you want to use on it. Now, to go over those again quickly from what we did last week, um, we have the space bar, which gets us out whatever we're doing. Um, X gives me the transform manipulator, which right away I can start to manipulate this to look more like I want it to. I need it to be a little stretched out there, maybe a little stretched out there, and C rotates it. I'm going to turn the whole thing like that, and V, the location of it is fine. Um, and I can use my S key to zoom in and out, which I will a little bit, and I immediately get into a problem that some of you had last week. I want to move individual parts of it. Um, when we're looking at the Softimage screen, over on the left, as I said over here, this is where we get things, create things, and throw them in there. Over on the right, there's a bunch of bars here that let us do stuff to what's in the scene. And when we're doing um, scaling, rotating, and translating, we are moving the object on those X, Y, and Z axes. But what we're going to look at this week is how do we move the individual parts, the points, edges, and polygons? How do we scale and rotate and translate those guys? Uh, if you look over here, there's a whole bar called Select. Um, how many people in here um, use Photoshop often? And I use it often. Does anybody else use it often? Oh, OK. But do, does anybody in here consider themselves an expert at Photoshop? I consider myself a medium expert. Does anyone know an expert in Photoshop? OK. What makes someone an expert in Photoshop? When you get right down to it, the person you know, what makes them better? It's what they do every day. I, I would, I would, um, I would bargain with you that what they can do better than anyone else in Photoshop is select. That the trick to Photoshop, the trick to being a master of Photoshop is being able to go into a picture and to select just the part you want. The part you want to modify or the part you want to put somewhere else. Because truthfully, anybody can push a filter button. Color correction is whatever. But the power of Photoshop is the power to select. And if you want to become great at Photoshop, become great at selecting. There's a reason that there's so many tools in Photoshop that are dedicated to selection because that is really the root of the program. Um, a modeler, that modeler we saw earlier, selection. He can select anything he wants whenever he wants it. He can select every other point, he can select edges, polygons like that, and he can use all these tools and fly through them. And we have a similarly complicated number of tools to select in Soft Image as you have in Photoshop. They all live over here in this select bar, and I'm going to click it just so you see it. If I go to this menu, there's a menu, and then there's menus, and then there's menus under menus under menus, all, all based just on selecting various stuff. Now, you can go through them, and that's something that's up to you, but I'm going to show you bits and pieces of them, and then you start to put together your powers to select. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do with this selected, I'm going to hit my space bar because I'm in a weird mode. And I'm going to go from object mode to point mode and watch what happens. When I click point, my screen changes. Now, we go yellow and you see these points. When I select now, I'm no longer selecting the object. I'm selecting points of the object. Now, another thing about this is that um, I'm by default in Soft Image, I'm in a selection mode, which is called square selection mode. Because when you draw a square, you are picking stuff. That's one of the really primitive Photoshop modes too, right? Um, there's a couple things that work together, and I want to show you. I'm going to back out here, and let's say I want to select all of these here. I'm going to select those three, let's say. I want to add to my selection, and watch the keyboard. I'm going to hold down my shift key and select more. And I'll select that one, and I'll select this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. Okay, now you'll see in the bottom of the screen it says left adds to selection, middle does something else, but that's because I'm holding down that shift. I'm gonna release it, and I'm now, well, if I hit space bar, I'll hit space bar once and go back to point mode. I'm now back in my normal mode. I over selected. I can hold down the control key, like in Photoshop, and I can toggle my selection. So that is on, now it's off. If I wanted to add something that is off, I also can say, I'll take this point and this point 
And I'll look around in my view here, use my S key, and go over here, and I'll grab this point and this point. Okay, so that's using shift and control with point selection. Now, let's manipulate it. If I scale it, I'm gonna hold down my X key, I get a transform manipulator that only affects those points. See that? Uh, I'm gonna go to where it says wireframe, and I'm gonna turn this over to an OpenGL view, so we can see it better. And you'll see that now I can modify just those parts if I want to. I can rotate them as well. And immediately we're going to get into another thing which um, becomes very important in all this and translate them. Where am I going to scale them and rotate them and translate them from? Uh, up here we have the selection bar 